September 1st marks the first day of fall, and I've got an outlook for you for September, October, and November as we roll right into hotter temperatures. Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Chris Justice. A big heat wave setting up for the first few days of meteorological fall, which begins September 1st, and we've got some changes we need to talk about. Hi everybody, if you like what you see here, you enjoy long-range forecasting or just meteorology in general, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my page, and turning on notifications. I'm a straight shooter when it comes to meteorology. I'm going to tell you when storms are coming, whether they be tropical, severe weather, or as we get into wintry season, snow coming toward the United states wherever you might be so big storms i'll let you know what's coming in let me show you the latest outlook here for the next six to ten days because we do have changes moving in it's going to be very hot across the united states and it's not only the next six to ten days the latest outlook for the next eight to fourteen days also shows hotter than average temperatures for most of the united states from maine to florida west of texas it's going to be really cooking the week three outlook is also out. This would get us through September 9th through the 22nd. There's a higher than normal chance that most of the South will be hotter than average as well, especially Florida and Texas. We're talking about temperatures uh, being above normal by as much as 5 to 10 degrees. So that puts many more days ahead, likely heading toward the 90s. What about precipitation? Well, it looks to be very dry for a lot of us as that big ridge sets back up. You remember that? It's been with us a lot of uh, July into August, and that means we're likely to see mainly dry conditions as well as we're mapping this out. The 8 to 14 day outlook also shows drier than normal temperatures as well. Not great news when you have a drought. The monthly drought outlook also gets us through September. This tells you whether the drought's going to persist or get better. And in this case, you see a lot of brown toward the middle parts of the United States just coincides with and more evidence that it's going to be very dry for September. It looks like uh, Noah going with the fact that uh, it's going to be so dry here. They expect not only the drought to persist, but if there's not drought here in the yellow, which stretches back toward the Midwest, down toward Arkansas and back through Oklahoma, uh, you're going to end up seeing a drought develop if you don't have one already. So where can we find some relief? Well, Noah says not for fall. This outlook gets us through November 30th, which is all of meteorological fall. It looks like there's not going to be any relief from the drought in the middle parts of the United States. Uh, Noah going with the forecast here that the drought will persist there in brown, or if there's not a drought yet, here in yellow, the drought starting. Okay, so that's the way things look right now. I do have access to computer models. The European, believe it or not, does go out into the future. Kind of teleconnections. It lets us know what it is basically thinking will happen. And there's some accuracy to them. They've gotten better in the year. So let's look at temperatures first. Who's hoping for some uh, pumpkin spice latte weather, right? You want it to cool down a little bit. Me, personally, I'm ready for... The leaves to change, I'm ready for football weather, and I'm I'm ready for some grilling out outside without it being too terribly hot. Doesn't like we'll get it. We do have a cool down for Labor Day weekend, believe it or not, and by cool I mean just cooler than normal. It's still going to be warm, just a lot of 70s popping up, but it doesn't last. In, in fact, look at this. As we go into the middle of September, this would be September 17th, looks like a big ridge just locked in for the United States. Yes, there will be cool downs here and there, but overall I expect us to be very warm across much of the United States. This looks to continue. I'm fast forwarding fast here through the European all the way into October. Not as hot or above where we should be this time of the year, but it's certainly still warmer than average. What about precipitation? Well, you guessed it. Noah put that forecast out for a reason. Look at the Europeans' depiction of where we'll go into September. It shows drier than average conditions lasting all the way to October 1st. So when can we find some rain? Let's look at the seasonal European outlook. It gives us all of September, October, November, and December in a form of is it going to be drier or is it going to be wetter? Let's map it out. August, it had was wetter than average, which was right on the money. We were quite wet and stormy around that ridge. September, it has drier than average conditions for the Carolinas, Georgia, a lot of Florida back through Alabama and Mississippi. As we go into October, it looks like we have about equal chances of being wet or dry in the southeast. And then November, looks like we're wetter than average. Looks like it starts to get pretty wet going into the Thanksgiving time frame. That starts introducing the thought of possibly that wetness being maybe some snow in parts of the Northeast. As we look toward December, this model, the European going with a very wet December. 
hey, for those of you that want to see a snow, I told you in my snow forecast, we're going to be looking out for snow bombs this year as a very active El Nino pattern sets up. This would coincide with that right at about the time El Nino is expected to begin picking up steam as we move into December. So this model showing December could be wetter than average. January looking wetter than average as well across the southeast, again coinciding with my El Nino forecast and outlook for winter. February also looks wetter than average according to the European model. So it shows we're dry September, October, and then wet in the southeast and the east beginning in November. So look for that. As we look at temperatures, what does the European forecast monthly say for temperatures? Well, August, it had us warmer than average. That's right. September, it's got us well above average, especially in areas like Texas and Louisiana, where you are dealing with wildfires right now. You do not want to see warmer than average temperatures or drier than average conditions. You want to see some rain and cooler air. According to the European model, we will not get it. October looks like we're equal chances for being cool or hot across a lot of the east coast there in white and then as we go into november it looks like we're back to just above normal in the yellow shade right there as we go toward december looks like equal chances in the south of being uh, above or below normal and then january we, th we see blue for the first time in the southeast that's when it's expected to be cooler than average again when you see that in the winter time spells hey chance for some snow when you got cooler than average temperatures expected by the model and wetter than average precipitation. Let's get into February for the seasonal forecast. It's as far as we can go. Looks like equal chances of being wet, equal chances of being dry, and same thing with the temperature model. It's showing about 50-50 chance, so about equal chances. Let's show you where we go from here. This is uh, another snow model, basically spits out when do we start seeing snow develop in areas of the United States and Canada. Well, this model, the European, shows we start to see that as we go into late September, which is on course with what's normal. You start to see up toward Western Canada, the Rockies beginning to see some snow as we go into October. And again, that's when we start to see the snowpack that's typical for winter begin to develop in some of those areas. And yep, by the time we get in the middle of uh, October, the snowpack is developing. And again, if you follow my forecasts uh, for winter, Snowpack is important for developing how things behave in the winter. If you get that normal snowpack in place, when the cool fronts come through, they're actually cool. Okay, if you don't have snowpack there, it's like air running across uh, barren ground. If the air is running across a snowpacked ground, of course, the air is going to be colder, and you get those typical summer forecasts or winter forecasts uh, where it goes in. I say summer because look at this. This is the CanSips model. It basically is a blend of a lot of different models. It also uh, coincides with a Canadian model. So let's map this out month by month. It shows August is warmer than normal, September is warmer than normal, October warm, and then November equal chances. But look at this. What's interesting is by Christmas, December time, into January, into February, it has the East Coast not only uh, a better chance at being cooler than normal, significantly cooler than normal. You see the dark blues in here. So that could make for interesting weather as we go deeper in the forecast. The CanSips model for precipitation equally as interesting. September, it's got us dry just like the European did. But look at October. It looks very wet in October, very wet in November. This would coincide with a typical El Nino pattern. December looks to be very wet. So hey, a white Christmas certainly looking a little bit more likely than a normal low-end chance uh, for, for some across the East Coast. Uh, according to what the CanSips model and the European model is showing, okay? January, we look to be wetter than normal. Same story with February. By March, looks to be wetter than normal as well. One more thing I want to show you here as far as Noah is concerned, then I want to get to some kind of uh, fun facts about fall as we get through when is daylight savings, that sort of thing. Uh, but this is the Global Hazards Outlook. This gets us through the next uh, couple of weeks here. This gets us through September 19th. Where is the weather pattern favorable for hazardous weather? And in this case, it goes through the Pacific right here. Just to give you some uh, groundwork of where we're at, it's not only showing warmer than average temperatures here uh, in the Pacific region. This is where we look for El Nino to be developing, but it's forecasting uh, well above normal. It also is forecasting tropical cyclone development in these areas. Same story back here in the typical main development region of the Atlantic. NOAA going with a high probability of tropical cyclone formation in those areas. Okay. It also has us shaded in this yellow, which means above average precipitation is likely as well as below average average precipitation. So we're going to be dry and we're going to be hot according to 
uh, this from NOAA. So again, very interesting stuff showing up here on those models. I do want to show you one other thing here as we're mapping this activity out. Uh, fall is right around the corner and El Nino appears to be at least strengthening as we get into fall. So let's look at that. El Nino is basically in that area of the Pacific I showed you that NOAA is forecasting above average temperatures, therefore uh, also some above average tropical activity in the same region. But when the Pacific's warmer in this area, it makes El Nino develop. And a strong El Nino has an impact on especially the southern jet. It makes an active southern jet. That can send in severe weather at times. It can also send in a lot of rain. In this case, when you have the two combined, it will be cold and wet weather meeting up. And you know what that means for the East Coast. What about temperatures? Well, in the summertime, we see the temperature peak around July 15th in the Western Carolinas. Uh, as we go toward August 15th, they're slowly starting to come down and meteorological uh, fall begins September 1st for a reason. Meteorological fall is September, October, November, a little bit different than what you uh, typically see on the calendar, but uh, officially if a hurricane were to make landfall, it would be uh, a landfall in the fall, not the summer, in the record books. So it is an official type thing. September 1st, we have an average high temperature of 86, but look at the ground we cover in September and October. Significantly cooler air begins to move on in. So you start to see typical things like our first uh, temperature in the 50s, which usually occurs the first two weeks of September. The first temperature in the 40s, the fourth week of September going into the first week of October. So we're in that time frame where cool air does come in, especially during the overnight hours. And of course, winter is when we see our coldest air. And in the Western Carolinas, our average high temperatures are the coldest around January 1st, and then slowly begin that rise back up as the sun angle begins to change. So fall colors, that brings me to that. If you're in the Western Carolinas or anywhere on the Appalachian mountains. Uh, this is when we start to see some of the trees begin to change. It, it kind of is a little bit like, what? Am I seeing that? Is that just a, a die, dying dead tree? No. Fall colors actually do start to peak up. Some spotty color in the western North Carolina mountains and only certain trees. But this will begin to grow as we move throughout the next couple of weeks, especially. Especially when we start getting some of those colder temperatures, okay? The average first frost for the western Carolinas is sometime between October 1st through the 10th in the Asheville area, October 11th through the 20th from Hendersonville to the ID5 corridor. And then we typically get our first First frost uh, sometime in late October for the southern part of the upstate. So hey, we're getting to that time frame where that stuff is normal. We fall back this year on November 5th. So we've got about another two months. Uh, the new sunrise at that will be 654. And at that point, in November, the new sunset, ooh, look at that, 532. So when will peak color be for the fall colors? Well, for the upstate of South Carolina, we're looking at early November. Typically for areas like Hendersonville, you go late October and then for Asheville northbound through the Blue Ridge Mountains uh, and the Appalachian Mountains up higher north, uh, you go mid-October. So looking at the United States as a whole, of course, the Rockies uh, will have this earlier. Just showed you snow will become possible in some of the Rockies as we go throughout the next couple of weeks uh, as we start to get that base down for a snowpack. And yeah, uh, we're looking at the fall colors beginning to show up in the Rockies probably by early October. Uh, higher up into Maine, uh, parts of Vermont, we'll start to see that color start to peak through in early October as well. So about a month away from that fall color beginning to show up, which is one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, locally, uh, you can expect Charlotte and Atlanta. We're talking November 1st through the 5th, and then October 25th through the 30th, sometime along the I-85 corridor. And yes, snow is possible in the Carolinas in October. We had uh, that snow in 1913 and October 20th. That's the earliest snow has ever fallen at the GSB International Airport, but it is certainly possible uh, around then. You remember on October 30th, 2014, we had snow in Greenville. The first snow in the United States, measurable snow, fell that year in Greenville, South Carolina. Can you believe it? It was one of those kind of freak accidents that happened. Cold air was just in place for a brief period of time, and you had that snow come down pretty hard and heavy all over the pumpkins, which was a really cool sight to see. The snow was gone by 9, 10 a.m. So rainfall update. I'll end it here. Yesterday, uh, we picked up about three-tenths of an inch of rain at GSB International Airport. The season to date, we've got about 14 and a half inches. That puts us at a surplus this summer, now that we're wrapping up summer, of one point three inches. 
it's a little, a little bit dry this summer. We're, we're at normal, so I'm not concerned about major drought conditions across the upstate. And we have a huge surplus from the very wet winter that we had and early start to spring. We have 44 inches for the year. That puts us above normal at about 10.6 inches. So we're sitting okay rain-wise. It's just been pretty dry most of the this season. So there's the way things are shaping up right now seasonally. Folks, I will correct this. I will update it as we go on. I'm just giving you my best call as I see it right now, which again is my philosophy. So if you can appreciate that, I'm transparent. Give me a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications. Again, I am a straight shooter when it comes to weather forecasting, whether it be tracking those leaves as they come on through, or whether it be tracking severe weather like tropical activity, severe weather concerns like tornadoes, or a first big frost, first big freeze. If I see it coming, I'm going to let you know, but I'll also be the first to tell you if it's changing. Based on current data that I see right now, that was my seasonal outlook for fall. Hope you guys have a good night.